Hey guys, welcome to my commentary tech advice video as I will be giving you some advice on what performance you'll be getting from an i7 4770 and a GTX 780 when they're put together and what in-game performance that I get from these parts. So in the future I'll be doing different parts for different uh, CPU, RAM and all that stuff but for today as I said an i7 4770 and a GTX 780 and what actually happens or what performance I get so Battlefield 4 60 frames on ultra settings at 1080p Daisy uh, Daisy standalone I believe depending where you are on the map because Daisy standalone is not really optimized yet since it's in pre-alpha as people that play Daisy will know uh, if you're in, if you know what I'm about to say, because you've played Daisy, if you're up in the northeast side of the map, where Gooba sort of area, you get the terrible like. With my system, I get 20 frames, but if I'm down near Cherno, down the other side of the map, I get 60 frames. So it just depends where you are on the map and what's going on. Uh, another game that I play that near that gets real performance is is. Total War Rome 2. That game came out uh, last year, September, I believe. Anyway, I get on medium settings because I let N Nvidia Shadow Play do all my Shadow Play in GeForce. Sorry, let Nvidia GeForce do all my optimizations for my GPU. So does all the settings at once for best performance. And yeah, I get about 1080p medium frames, uh, medium frames, medium settings, I'm stuffing up all over today because I'm just thinking off the top of my head, and um, yeah, it just 60 frames. Now, if there's any other games that I, I could go for ages about games, what games it really, like, could do, um, there is other videos out there for, like, Metro, which I don't have, Crisis, which I don't have, and all that, I can't cover those videos because I don't have the games. But for Battlefield 4, Daisy, Daisy mod, uh, 60 solid frames all over the maps because they've optimized the settings or the server. Server? I am completely off it. The game engine. There we go. And that, yeah, that's why that's different to the standalone. Um, now, for temperatures, we're going to move on to temperatures. I'm going to move on to temperatures. I've got a H80. I water cooler. It's a 120 mil water cooler on my CPU. It has one fan since uh, it's a bit dodgy, and that keeps my CPU at roughly oh, a good 40 40 Celsius during light tasks, as in just got Steam open, watching some YouTube videos, sort of thing. It's around mid 30 mid 30s to hot 40 around there on a average day I live in Australia so an average day where I live is about between 20 to 28 Celsius so that's idle temperature but since it's getting cooler it's getting winter in Australia now um, this i7 at idle like right now as I'm doing this video is at 28 Celsius now that's pretty good, 28 Celsius. The graphics card is also at 28 Celsius, and that ca that bloody thing can go up to about 60. The graphics card, 66. I've seen the highest at when I'm playing Battlefield 4 for about mm, more than two hours. It goes that high. It doesn't go any higher. And uh, when I'm playing Battlefield 4, the CPU goes to about 60 Celsius as well. So um, that's with that water uh, H80i. Now. It comes down to it can come. You can get all different temperatures. I'm not going to say you're going to get worse. You could get worse than I do, depending on what your saturation, uh, saturation setup is, um, where you you are in the world, and the case, the fans, uh, the position of where your computer is. If it's on the floor, if it's on a desk. If so, yeah, it just depends when you where you have it is how it keeps cool. Now. What else am I going to cover with this video? I've covered the money. and no, I haven't covered the money. I'll do that next. The cost. Now, I'm not an Intel person like fanboy or an AMD fanboy. I go for bang for the buck. 
Now, you're probably going, why did you buy an i7-4770? Well, more, I hate the people are going to, I'm going to say the word, but I hate saying this, and I'm going to put it my way, future-proof. Other people say future-proof. You can't future-proof a system. It's more future friendly. I'd say future friendly. That's my way of saying it. So you can't future proof. That's nothing. And I'm doing the whole future proof thing with my fingers. And um, the i7 I bought because it's a, it's got four cores and four ghost cores or hyper threading as they like to call it. And um, AMD just has eight cores but I'm not going to turn this video into a AMD versus Intel thing. This is, was about the GTX 780 and i7-4770. Uh, so, yes, it has four cores and four um, ghost cores. The pricing for the i7-4770 is about Australian dollars, 330, 330, I believe, when I bought it back six months ago. Um, it's probably a little bit less or more depending where you are as as I said what de just depends where you are in the world different countries blah 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 different rates and different currencies and all that shit so it depends where you are now I'm gonna move on more to the GPU side the GPU cost me an arm and a leg at the time when it came out last June I of 2013, the 780, and it was a bit most beast of the thing at the time, apart from the Titan, like it was at the same par with a Titan, but it still cost an arm and a leg. For me, it was $860. Now you can pick them up for about $400, depending where you are again. So, um, gets the job done, as, as you can tell. When the games are actu actually optimized, you can play them on the high settings, well, the games that are out right now, uh, maybe say a half a year to a year down the road they'll start going down in settings but hey that's, that's okay by me I'll just be getting another one and slapping it in SLI and so now i am talked about the money I've talked about their performance I've talked about um, their heat outputs um, now I'm going to talk about the requirements for these what you need if you're interested in buying them. For the fourth generation you can either buy the motherboard that has to go with it, you have to buy a motherboard that has to go with it is a Z87 or the new Z97s that are coming out in the next, well are out or are coming out depending when you watch this video and they will be compatible with the fourth generation Haswell processors because that's what the fourth generation is called, it's Haswell. Um, the new, next generation, the fifth generation, are going to be called Broadwell, I'm pretty sure. Don't prompt me on that one, they could change the name. But I remember, I recall it being Broadwell last time I checked. And um, they're going to be compatible, just like Sandy and Ivy Bridge, which is second gen, third gen, they were compatible motherboards and CPUs. It's going to be the same with this. So you, if you buy, say, I know I seven forty seven seventy. You find one for cheap, and you want to stick it in a Z ninety seven board. Go right ahead. Same socket. Go ahead, and you get new future uh, features too, of the um, Z ninety seven chipset. If you have a Z eighty seven board and you want to buy the new i five i seven fifty seven seventy, I'm pretty sure that's what's going to be called because that's what the trend is at the moment. Um, yeah, you can stick that in that, but you won't get the extra features. But that's okay, I've got a Z87 board and I'm pretty happy with it. So, that's for the CPU. I've also, I forgot to mention, I have 60, 16 gigs of DDR3 Corsair 1600 megahertz RAM. That can also help you with performance of games as well. I forgot to mention that at the start, I've just remembered by looking at my computer. Um, that will help, plus it's an SSD. I've got an SSD. SSDs also give you a great boost in performance for your graphics. So, keep that in mind if you want to boost performance. Get an SSD, chuck that shitty mechanical hard drive away. Um, now, I'll go on to the graphics card uh, requirements. You need, for the 780, if you want to get a 780 or any 700 series, or any really 500, this is NVIDIA, 500 to 700 or series at this time of the filming. Um, you need PCI Gen 3rd, 3rd Gen, PCI Gen 
to get the full bandwidth out of your graphics card so the full bandwidth means the full frames it's using everything on its card everything on the chipset and you can get full everything so don't go stick this in the GTX 780 if you want to go buy one because they're cheap now don't go stick it in like a Intel Core 2 quad because I have an Intel Core 2 quad and no bad idea just no they're not compatible since that's got the first gen of PCI you've lost like two-thirds of your um, performance and you just would have wasted your money upgrading the graphics card so yeah I believe that is all for what I need to cover I've covered the, everything I want to cover so if you guys like this video as it's my first uh, tech uh, video techie video give it a thumbs up if you don't like it you can also thumbs down it uh, if you haven't subscribed and you want more of these videos, subscribe. And yeah, just comment below what what you would um would you upgrade to a GTX 780 if you could, or an i7 4770, so you could get this performance and future friendly your computer. This is Oz. I hope you enjoyed this video. I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye from now.